All right, what's up everyone? It's Justin from Long Beach Mushrooms. I am at the farm today. It's on a Sunday, because I had to come in and fix our steamer barrel. So I figured, well, while I'm fixing it, why don't I kind of let y'all know what we do and how we, uh, how we do it. So first thing I need to say is, uh, I am not a licensed electrician. Uh, this is a DIY type project. So be very wary, uh, be very careful, cautious, consult your electricians. Uh, on what you're doing when you do this, plumbers as well, because there will be water running to it. Um, so just a little disclaimer, it's a DIY project, things do go wrong. Uh, I use the system for a while, so I know how to troubleshoot and I could, I could pick things out before they happen. Um, but yeah, I wanna show you what it is. So the first thing I did was I have a, um, I think it's 15, 13 or 15 gallon stainless steel barrel found somebody off of offer up that was selling it they said that they used to have it used to have uh, glycerin in it like vegetable glycerin so um it's pretty straightforward on what this is the reason why we have this is it is just a vessel to create steam and then we we then pipe that steam into our pasteurization troughs so that we can get our blocks our substrate blocks up to temperature which for us is uh at least 300 i mean at least three hours at 200 degrees and above um and yeah this is what we use to to get it there so first thing i want to let you know is stainless steel is not mandatory we were using 55 gallon steel uh, steel barrels for a long time and they worked great they worked for probably two years and then it started to rust a little bit the bottom started falling out um these actually, these are smaller vessels, so they get to temperature a lot quicker. Uh, yeah, like there's nothing wrong with the steel barrel drum. Um, I just had an opportunity to pick these up really cheap there. They were $20 a piece. So I bought two of them and I have a stainless steel, you know, a steamer barrel. Uh, so let's really quickly go over the makeup of what this is. So the first thing you'll see is this water line hanging out. We have a water line. Uh, this I bought at Home Depot. It's just a universal uh, laundry attachment water line. And um, the great thing about this is it is uh, it is metal, and the reason why that's important is because it is connected. Move it back a little. Connected to our steamer barrel, and why you want it metal is this barrel is going to get really really hot, and if you have any plastic fittings on there, they can melt pretty freaking easily. So um metal works best the metal thread line works best it is so again there's a couple fittings on here that'll make it attach if you buy the universal i think it's this is the eight foot universal water line at home depot it'll have all the fittings that you need uh we attach it to this brass fitting which normally goes to our hose and then on that it's a 25 psi um pressure regulator pressure regulators are really really important if you are using float valves, which we are, the system requires a float valve because the vessel is too small to hold enough water. So the reason why this is important is if you do not have a pressure regulator on your water line, uh, there is potential that your water line is, your, your water pressure is so strong and so high that your float valve is supposed to, as it, as it empties, it's supposed to uh, go down and then that'll release the water and I'll show you a full valve in a bit and that'll release the water into the barrel however your water pressure is so high even when it's in the closed position water is still going to come out of it uh, and then you can get a flood uh, I'm telling you this because it's happened to me before luckily it happened to me at my house so my whole backyard was flooded which sucked but no harm no foul it was just a great lesson learned so pressure regulator super important so this will connect to a normal uh, hose line and that is what supplies your water to your steamer barrel throughout the whole duration of the whole cook. So of course we have a heating element in here, which I'll show you. It'll boil the water. Steam will then rise and go through a hose and that hose will get transferred over to our pasteurization troughs. As that steam escapes, you're losing your water level. So as the water lowers, this hose line will kick on and add water to your line. I'm actually gonna take you off the stand for a bit because I wanna show you what this is. So the next component is, it's this hose that's attached, I mean this, yeah, this water line that's attached to your spigot. 
it then feeds into a, uh, a ball valve or a, a float valve. So the float valve, what it typically does is if it's, if the water level is low, the float, the float will be hanging lower and that opens the valve up and lets water in. As water fills up, the float valve will start floating and then it'll close that valve, not letting any water in. Again, that's why it's important to have a pressure regulator because if your pressure is so high, it's gonna push water out no matter what. So you want low pressure feeding to your float valve so that when your float does float to the top, it'll shut off that water and it's not fighting pressure. Um, this, this is a stainless steel float valve. Another thing to notice is uh, this stem right here. It's actually not the stem that came with it. Uh, they were, it came with a really long metal stem that would not have fit the diameter of this barrel. It would have been way too long. So I just went to Home Depot, found a, uh, found a screw. I forgot what it, exactly it's called. It's like a double-sided something or another, <laughs> but it fit. Um, it fit both ends, so I was able to screw on the flow valve and then screw it on to the actual valve itself. Um, so that's the second part, water line to flow. Okay, so the third piece is a weldless bulkhead. These are awesome because just like it sounds, you don't have to weld them on. They come with a gasket and they just screw onto each other. So it, it allows us to create a hole through the barrel without using any welds. Um, that black ring around it is RTV silicone, high temperature silicone, which is super important to just make this, make sure this thing is watertight and there's no water leaking through it. I put a bead of, I put a bead of RTV silicone on the inside and a bead on the outside, along with the gasket that it comes with. And what this hole allows us to do is put in this heating element. We use a 4,500 or 45, yeah, 4,500 watt heating element, 240 volts. And now we can slide this heating element in. And what we use to attach it is a tri-clamp. Can we go get one? Uh, this is an old tri-clamp, but what we'll do is it just goes around both. And then really simply attaches on. I need two hands to do this, hold up. All right, it attaches on and then you just use this to tighten it. I've actually learned not to over tighten this because the vessel is rounded. And if I tighten it too much, it's actually gonna, um, it doesn't, it, it kicks up a little bit too high and then it'll create leaks. So I don't tighten it super tight, just enough to hold it in place. But then try clamp, well, well this bulkhead Put in your heating element to a tri-clamp. This is an old heating element that burned through. Uh, that's why I'm fixing this. Uh, but yeah, that's the basics of it. So if you take a look again really quickly, and I'll show you on the barrel that's on. We'll use, uh, from the spigot goes your 25 PSI uh, pressure regulator to your universal water line adapter. Thread it onto your barrel with your float valve. Again, RTV silicone beads on both sides to keep it watertight. Float valve. For me, I had to replace the stem. You might not have to. From there, weldless bulkhead, heating element, tri clamp to hold it in place. Those are the basic mechanics of it. Now I'm gonna take you to the barrel that's working. Okay, this is a bit of a tight fit, but I wanna show you, let me lower this just a little bit. Or I'll move you guys back just a little bit. Okay, there you go. So that's the same barrel as the other one. We have a power line connected to it. Really important, this is a 240 volt, 30 amp uh, line. Forgot what the wire gauge is, but that's plugged into the heating element like we showed you. On the back side of this, you can see in the back is where the water line is. On top, we actually don't, uh, so the bad thing about those barrels is it comes with the, it doesn't come with the lid, it, it's all sealed tight. So we had to cut the lid, we had to cut the top of it off. And then we're just using an old 55 gallon drum lid that was from our old system. And we just put that on top. 
So heating element, water line in the back, lid, the lid also has a weldless bulkhead in it, and then we tri-clamped a hose from the lid to the trough. And now uh, the um, water's getting fed in from the line. Heating element is heating up the water. Steam, uh, water is boiling and steam is getting created. It's getting pushed up through the lid onto this insulated uh, hot, high temperature hose, and it gets fed into the trough. That's the basics of steam pasteurization with the steamer barrel. Ugh. So something that I didn't do on these yet that I've done on my old steel barrels that work really well, I am gonna do it, is to insulate the barrels. This is just really a simple, got it from Home Depot, double reflective insulation with staple tab. I don't know what the staple tab means, but anyways, it's like this bubble wrap type stuff and it does really well on these barrels. Um, I also use like an aluminum tape to, to hold it secure. What the insulation does, what I've learned that it does is um, it doesn't allow the barrel to, to radiate a ton of heat or as much heat, it deflects some of it. The good thing about that is because this plug, when it's plugged in, is really susceptible to heat. Just imagine, so your barrel, this is your barrel, your plug is in it. As this barrel heats up, all your, ele all your metal elements in your plug will expand. And then when it cools down, it'll contract. And it'll expand and contract over multiple uses. What can then happen is because of that expansion and contraction, some of your connections could get loose. And that's when a fire hazard can happen. Really important. Um, really important safety tip is to number one, have a schedule on, on checking all of your equipment to make sure it's running well, all the, all the connections are tight. Super important to make sure that you have that. And then one thing that can kind of mitigate some of that risk, now definitely still check your, your, uh, all of your equipment, but what this can do is, because it holds in some of that heat on that barrel, uh, it exposes less heat to that plug, which means there's less contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction, because there's it's insulated and it's not as hot. It's not as violently hot. It helps big time. So I'm actually gonna do that later. I'm gonna wrap this barrel with a single layer of this insulation and that's gonna help protect the heating element. It's also gonna make it uh, cooler to, or you're, like I'm able to touch it if I need to. So for instance, if for whatever reason I brush against this, this insulation will make sure that I don't get burned. If you don't have insulation around it and you brush against it, you could get burned. It gets pretty hot. Uh, so that's the basics of a steamer barrel. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you all that because there's a lot of DIY stuff in mushroom farming that I learned and not all of it is really straightforward on how to do it. I remember when I first started, I was trying to figure it all out and I'm not, you know, I wasn't super handy. I'm definitely way more handy now. But there's a lot of things that I wasn't sure, you know, how to do this, how to do that. So I just want to put this video together. This system is definitely borrowed, stolen, uh, iteration of Cactus Hat Mushroom Steamer Barrel. He did an awesome job with an awesome video. Um, that's how that's how I built my that's how who I built my system off of. Obviously, we have a little bit of differences, but it's pretty much exactly the same thing. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, there's a couple more things I want to show you before I kind of wrap up. So what makes this system awesome is for me is this. So I don't have temperature. I don't have like a PID system or temperature probes connected to all that. That really controls my heat. Um, I do probe my blocks to make sure it gets the temperature, but those probes don't control any of my power. What I do is I calibrate how long I need the cooks to go for using this system. Um, these are smart plugs. They're great because you could turn them on and off on an app. However, they are not high voltage uh, plugs. So I can't turn off a 240 volt plug with these, with these smart switches. But we do have this relay control that my electrician found for us. And he connected, so the plugs essentially, uh, the plugs will connect to this relay box. This relay box is what brings electricity to those to those plugs and the smart plugs are just there to turn on and off the relay box. 
So that's how I can bypass not having high voltage smart plugs to turn things on and off. So the great thing about that is uh, we can calibrate using our probes. So our probes record us a graph. The graphs will tell us, you know, when it gets a temp, how long it's getting temp for, all that. And then we can calibrate by saying, okay, if our blocks are uh, hitting the temp at hour 14, we want to hold that temp for about three hours, then we then our cook can take 17 hours. And then we'll just, on our, on our app, we'll just um, set a timer for 17 hours for the plug to turn off. So we are constantly calibrating it because with the seasons, things change here. Like if it's cooler, it's gonna take longer to heat up. If it's hotter, it's quicker. So we're just always calibrating that stuff. But the reason why I wanted to show you all this system is it's a great starter system. We're actually gonna move on from this pretty soon, but I wanted to show you all what we do before we move on. There's no knock on any of those, on any of the like the, the mainstream manufactured pasteurization systems like Bubba's Barrels and things like that. Bubba's Barrels are great. I've never personally used them, but I've had heard great things about from everyone about them. They're easy to use, they're safe, they're easy to replace things. Um, they're just like high quality manufactured. Uh, Eric Myers makes those. I, I've bought a bunch of things from Myers Mushrooms. He, he's a great person in this space. But I wanna show you this system because depending on what your preferences are, if you are, if you are a little handy, if you are good at troubleshooting, and if you are in a place where you can really keep an eye on your equipment um, and, and train your staff out to make sure that they check everything and, and have a SOP around it. Above his barrels landed at my door when I looked at it, I think it was almost six or $7,000 and I was only gonna be able to pasteurize uh, about 60 blocks. I'm making numbers up. So anyways, it was more expensive than I, than I thought it should have been. And I looked up this system and for maybe one, two, three, maybe like a couple thousand dollars, I was able to put this system together and I can pasteurize a ton of blocks, um, do it very efficiently. And uh, it's, this system has been really reliable. Like I said, there are pros and cons. There are things to look out for. Uh, I can go more into detail about, you know, some of the things that happened that went wrong. If, uh, if y'all want, just, you know, message me directly. But yeah, this is our pasteurization system. It's a great system. Right now, that one's on. These two are not on, obviously. That one is just got turned off and it's gonna cool down and go in, I mean, we're gonna take it to the lab to cool down. I run two steamer barrels at a time, four troughs at a time. That allows me to do, um, uh, uh, we do 80 blocks, 80 blocks. And then the next day we'll do 80 blocks, 80 blocks. So we can do 160 blocks a day. We run two to four cooks um, a week, depending on demand and where we're at. Uh, yeah, anything else to pay attention to? The biggest thing is making sure your blocks get to temp. So if you probe everything and you're, and you're paying close attention, you should be fine. Uh, with this system, obviously it's not, there's not a lot of, um, it's not a ton of control. Like you're susceptible to a lot of environmental controls and things like that, or environmental variables. So I just gotta constantly pay attention to that. Um, but yeah, again, this is Justin for Long Beach Mushrooms. If you want to know more about this pasteurization system, go ahead and direct message me uh, or send us an email on our website. Uh, and I will be happy to spend some time talking to you about this. Again, one of my passions is to uh, grow food where it's eaten. I can't do it all myself. We need other mushroom farmers out there. If you are interested, let me know. Other than that, like, subscribe, Promise I'll make more videos if y'all do that. Peace.